The oldest ride in the park is the boat chute. My grandfather built that in 1927, and it is probably the most popular ride in the park. It's the ride that everyone remembers. Everyone remembers getting their first kiss in the boat chute and, and the thrill of, of riding that ride. It looks kind of old and primitive when you walk up to it. It's a, one of the few rides that you really don't know what you're getting into until you, you complete it. You do exit the tunnel and start up a long 28-foot ramp uh, to the top of a hill. After that, you're catapulted down into a big splash of water. It's a, it's a repeater. Everybody likes it. If anyone has a memory of Lake Winnipesoka, most probably they have a memory of the boat chute. Memories can be sparked by seeing old rides and attractions, even if they're not in the same part where you learn to love them. Whalem Park is in Lunenburg in central Massachusetts. John and Beth Bowen, along with others in their family, have owned and cared for this park since the 1930s. I say it's an old-fashioned picnic park. The park that started actually as a ride park in 1893. Before then, it was like a picnic area. But the local trolley company, the Fitchburg and Lemon Street Railway Company, put in the rides as a way to encourage people to ride the trolleys on weekends and to use their excess electric power. Now Whalem Park has a powerful and quirky collection of older rides, many of which they bought when other parks grew tired of them or closed down. Well, the ride is an, an, called a looper. It's made by the Alan Herschel Company. And it was, the idea of the ride is that you sort of pump and relax, pump and relax to see if you can get it going around. Once it goes around, it goes around very quickly. Sometimes it's called the hamster cage. At Whalem, there are also wonderful surprises inside some of the old park buildings. Well, this used to be the fun house. Now it's called the Monster Motel. This, this is the barrel. The barrel of fun, the barrel of laughs. And one of the nice things is when you get in, you can actually do anything you want. You can try to do cartwheels, which I'm not going to try to do. You got it! You got it! You got it! Oh! A still operating barrel is unusual, but even common rides can hold unexpected treasures if you look hard enough, or if you know a carousel restorer like Susan Germain. She says this Luff carousel is not a standard model, but rather what she calls a mixed machine. This one has figures that were taken off and replaced and changed. And so you have some figures from the late 1800s, like 1880, 1890, all the way up into the 1910, 1915 time period. American carousels turn counterclockwise because most people are right-handed and you wanted to reach for the brass ring that way. European carousels go the other direction because it's more proper for equestrians to mount from that side of the horse. Well, there are more than horses here, even a couple of bizarre dragons. They're excellent. They have um, yellow eyes rather than brown eyes like most of the horses. And uh, there's two of them. They have the batwing saddles, and a little curl on their tail. And they're very ferocious looking. They actually discontinued making the dragons because they were scaring kids. So it makes them more rare than horses. Well, like this rare mixed machine, the whole park here has a sort of patchwork charm. This is the classic corner of the park. We have the Rotojet, which is from Palisades Park in New Jersey. And behind it, actually our, our crown jewel, the Philadelphia Toboggan American Flyer, Flyer Comet roller coaster designed in 1938 by John Allen. It replaces the former roller coaster that was blown down in a hurricane. It's the most popular ride in the park. It's popular because it's a great old coaster. The Flyer Comet opened to the public in 1940, and it's still manually released and braked. It's got a figure eight track half a mile long, with a steepest drop of 50 feet and a top speed of 40 miles an hour. But who cares about unimpressive statistics when it's so much fun? The park spiffed up the old coaster in the mid-90s by adding a tunnel known as the Black Hole over some camel hump dips near the end of the ride. We're not a destination park like the big themers where someone will come and spend a couple of days. We're a park where people come for the day, for an afternoon, for a couple of hours, 
And so we may see someone three or four times during the summer, and we're priced that way. <laughs> well, some parks aren't quite such a hodgepodge. This small park in southern Indiana is often called the birthplace of theme parks because the rides here had a common theme even before Disney made that idea popular. Holiday World is in Santa Claus, Indiana, which is uh, about midway between Louisville, Kentucky and Evansville, Indiana. When it started, it was called Santa Claus Land, and obviously everything here then had a Christmas theme. Bill Cook and his wife Pat remember the early days, right after the end of World War II. Just a train ride and shops, and that's what it was when we opened on August the 3rd in 1946. Santa Claus was a big attraction. Santa Claus was a big attraction. And my father was Santa Claus for 50 years here. And um, I went away to pursue a career in nursing. I became a nun for 10 years. And um, when I came back because my father was ill, um, my mother and father sent him to meet me at the train station. The Cook family has owned and run this park since it opened. The third generation is now in charge. Bill Jr. is the president. His sister, Natalie, takes care of personnel and training. And their brother, Philip, manages the company's championship golf course. <laughs> they all know how the park is organized. Holiday World consists of three different areas. It's the original section of the park, which used to be Santa Claus Land. Now it's the Christmas section of the park. The tradition has always been that Santa Claus is here every summer. And we carry on that tradition. And then we also added two other sections, the 4th of July section and the Halloween section. The three themed areas and a connected water park are arranged on beautifully wooded hills. The park has a quirky kitty land called Rudolph's Reindeer Ranch. But there are plenty of rides and various other attractions for adults as well. My favorite ride, of course, is the Raven. Because that's just like riding that sleigh on Christmas Eve. For a smaller park like ours, we are just extraordinarily proud of the Raven, despite the fact that I, I am a skydiver and uh, really enjoy that sport. The Raven is a great thrill to me yet at this point. It's just a wonderful experience to build a ride like that. You, you kind of ride it in your mind all winter long as you see the, the vents going out, the structure taking shape. We fudged through the track back and forth, made small changes in the routing of the ride, so we had to cut down as few trees as we could. And as a result, we've got trees growing right up next to the track. When we first fired it up and took the first ride on it, we all came back in the station and just, everybody just said, wow. <laughs> that was in 1995. And for a park that went 49 years without a coaster, Holiday World seems happy to have one of the best new coasters in the world. The park also has quirky vintage rides. The oldest ride is still the same ride it was when we put it in here. We built it ourselves. And we brought it up there. It's called the... Mother Goose Land train. Uh, I know when I was a kid, I, I rode that ride a lot, and I, I loved getting into the enclosed section where the, just the kids ride, where the very tiny seats are. And I have, I have no chance of ever fitting in there ever again. Oh, miniature trains are beloved parts of many old parks. Consider, for instance, out in Denver, Colorado, where you can often see puffs of steam along the shores of Lake Rhoda. The park here is called Lakeside. It still uses two small gauge steam engines that require a lot of maintenance. Adam Strzok helps keep them going. The man in charge of these chugging antiques is Ed Martin. It was built in 1898 for the 1904 World Fair. And they've been in this park for now for 90 years. They're my girls. Their mechanisms are simple, but red-hot beautiful. But the most important part on this whole scene, all the mechanisms, is that little valve going off right now. That's the pop-off valve, and if that don't go off, it'll keep building pressure for the stroke. Even though the train is not full size, it does a great job of creating considerable railroad romance. Ed and Adam take turns as engineers. The best part I like is over there by the college, right before you hit the, the upgrade, you really pour it on so you can make that upgrade. That is the most 